Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Discobot tutorial. In this video, it's going to be very short. We'll just be covering how to set up commands. It's going to be very simple. Just some simple commands where you can either, you know, do the command or do the command and put a number afterwards and maybe it deletes that many messages or something along those lines. It doesn't really matter. Just I want to show you guys how to do that. I know I said on Fridays I would be doing Blazor website videos, but since I started the Discobot series on Wednesday and all I showed was how to, you know, set it up and install everything. Some people are sitting here with a bot that logs in and turns on, but it doesn't do anything. So obviously I thought it would make sense to quickly get out a commands video. And once you guys know how to make commands in general, you can then obviously go ahead and experiment yourselves with making your own commands. And then in future videos, I'll show how to do specific things like, you know, limiting access to certain channels or roles and how to do certain like reaction things. And we're going to build a really cool dialogue handler pretty quickly, which is what we do in our own bot. I think that's going to be pretty interesting. Now let's get into the video. But of course, first I've got to thank my patrons, a special thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, Evgeny, Art Farrell, Buddha Ray, and Marie Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to my social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help me out by following on any of those, it'd be greatly appreciated. Now let's get to the coding. As always, the code that I write in my videos is available over on my GitHub. If you go down below to the description to GitHub, Dapodino, whatever, repositories, Discobot tutorial, and there it all is. So you can have access to it all. Obviously, the uh, like config with my bots token and stuff, that's excluded. You guys don't have that. I don't want you to go into the bot and do stuff. But um, everything else is there. You can just replace that. And that's so you can obviously compare your code against that. And if I have any errors, you can uh, always point things out. You can you know suggest improvements. It's up to you. Just use it how you wish. But anyway, the first thing to do is um, go back to your bot CS where we've got all the setup and it's very simple to make commands but we want to make sure we've got this commands config set up first. Now some of these settings are up to you right the prefix is up to you whatever you put your prefix as I don't care. Enable DMs is kind of up to you too um, just keep in mind that like um, with DMs if you enable DMs there can be problems with like um, for example some people having DMs enabled or not if you want to message someone in DMs and it's disabled then there'll be an error and stuff so I think it's always safer personally to just disable DMs uh, and make your commands just for your server rather than uh, in, in DMs obviously um, and then enable mention prefix that's optional as well you know whether you are okay with the person doing at bot instead of uh, just doing the prefix so they can use the prefix or at bot uh, I think it's pretty interesting so why not just have it you know um, we got case sensitive that's also up to you I'm gonna leave it to false and it says defaults false so that's fine uh, I don't really care about the help checks DM help um, just basically says when they when you do question mark help and get back the info on your commands do you get it sent in the server or in your DMs and I think DMs make sense um, but then again if you just send it in the server it doesn't really cause any harm it just kind of clutters up the chat so I'm just gonna go ahead and say uh, set this to true I would actually want it to be in DMs for that reason um, Enable default help is true by default, so I'm just going to leave that. We have the help commands. If you turn it off, you can actually build your own help, um, your own help command to display your commands, but they have a built-in one. It's quite nice. Um, extra arguments. So when you do a command, let's say your command uh, requires an integer, you can obviously do question mark command 10 or something. But what if they do question mark command 10 and then a space and then hello or something? Um, basically, this here, you can set it to true or false, as it says, whether any extra arguments should be ignored or not. If set to false, extra arguments will throw, otherwise they'll be ignored. So if we set this to true, they can still use commands while passing through extra parameters, just those parameters will be ignored. You set this to um, false, which is what it is by default, if you want like the command to only work if they put in the parameters exactly how you want them to be. And personally, I prefer it being like that, so I'm going to leave it as false, which is what the default is. Uh, prefix, oops. Prefix resolver, I'm not going to care about. That's just like some custom way to, um, I don't know, check the prefix, but we're going to keep it simple just with a string prefix. And then services is for dependency injection. We don't need to worry about, about that. We're not using that in this project just yet. Um, and then default command handle is true. That's what we're going to be using as well. Eventually, we might want more control over the uh, command flow so we can turn that off and use our own. But for now, we want to leave that as true, which is default. So we're done for now with the config. Let's make some actual commands. Okay, let's make the simple ping pong command that everyone does. You know, it's just a really simple, you do a command and you get a response message. So what we want to do is we want to go to our project and right click and make a new folder. So add folder and we'll just call this uh, commands. Makes sense, right? Inside commands, we're going to have classes for each command. So we want to add a new class and we'll call this um, the like, I don't know, fun commands, right? It's up to you. You can basically sort your commands into different classes. Now for this, we're going to want to make it a public class. I'll zoom in. And this class has to uh, inherit base command module. And from doing that, it gets included in commands essentially. And we're allowed to actually have our bot use this file for commands. And the syntax for uh, defining a command 
is by essentially writing a function um, and putting the command tag above it. It's quite simple. So we want to make a public because it's you know it can be called externally um, async. And as I mentioned last video, async is when stuff can be done uh, over time. So we can say go do like two people can use different commands at the same time. Um, it doesn't have to wait for one to be done before you do the other, right? So async task. Uh, task is the return type of asynchronous stuff. And then if you want to actually return something, you put the type in here, like if I want to return an int, but um, for the functions, you don't return anything. It's just an async task. And then your function name, which can be literally anything. Uh, it doesn't have to be the name of the command. It just makes sense to be, right? So we'll call this the ping command, right? So ping pong. And then the only other criteria is this uh, function has to take in a command context, okay? So if I put command context uh, CTX, that's just their, their naming convention. This gives us context to all the different things we might want. We can get access to the channel the command was used in, the client, which is the bot essentially, uh, command, which is the command being used, commands next, which is the um, thing we're using with the config to you know handle commands, we can access stuff on there. There's loads of other stuff, you know, the member that used the command, the guild, the server the command was used in, the message of the command, so we can like delete the message, for example. There's so many things we can do. Uh, for this command, we just want to basically reply saying pong. So what do we need to do that? Well, we really just need the channel. So we can say context.channel. So that's obviously referencing the channel that the command was used in. We want to send a message. So, you know, start typing, send message. And there's one, send message async. It's very useful. And you can pass in the content. So we're just going to say in a string pong, ping pong. Okay. And now you'll notice you have green squiggles. Now, green squiggles aren't really a problem. They're just warnings. But it's saying that this is an async function, uh, but we're not awaiting it. So if you don't await an async function, then it won't work how it's intended to work. Await basically means this function will do this line, but it won't continue to the next line in here until this is done. Um, and it's also good practice to do configure await false. That's something we're going to be doing all over the place. Uh, that can have its own video. I don't want to sit there and explain it now. This is meant to be a quick video. Okay. Just on anything you await, do dot configure await false at the end. Um, as I said, I will explain it. Don't worry. I'm, I'm not just like uh, copying out of explaining it. It just doesn't really, it deserves its own video is what I'm trying to say. Um, and all this is going to do, yeah, when we do the ping command, we want to respond with pong in the channel. Now to actually make this command work, we just need to do a command tag and then name the command. This is the actual thing they have to put in. So ping, ping. Okay. So when they do ping, we're going to run this pong. Okay. So let's just sort that. Um, and then go back to the bot. The only other thing we have to do is register the commands. So to register commands, it's as simple as calling a function to register the commands. So after this um, use commands next, we can then just say commands dot register command. And it takes in a uh, type. So the type will be the class we just made, which was fun commands. So fun commands. And then uh, open close bracket semicolon. So now we've registered all the commands inside that class. All the ones in here are now like part of our bot essentially. You have to remember whenever you make a different class to do commands in, you have to register it in here. But now if we run the bot by pressing the run button up here and go back to Discord, I'm looking in the server, I'm waiting for the bot to turn on. Uh, as you remember, the, uh, the we'll have a little console window pop up. Here it is. And this will start turning on the bot. We'll get all the logging. Um, and then once the bot's online, we should be able to just go ahead and use the command. So as you see, the bot's now online. If I go ahead and do help, help should be in DMs now. So yeah, I've got DM from the bot. There's the help thing. So I can do, uh, I think I have to go back to the server to do this one actually. If I do question mark help ping, help ping, no description, no arguments. Okay, the, the, the arguments is just ping, right? The command. So if we go back again and we now do ping, the bot responds pong. Okay, pretty simple, ping pong, like that. It's doing what it's told, right? We do ping, it goes here, we're like, oh, we've got a command called ping in fun commands. And what's the response? Well, in the channel it was sent in, send a message back, pong. Okay, that's quite simple. Now we can stop running the bot and write another command, for example, that takes in a parameter. So let's make a public async task add command context, right? This is what you have to do for every function command context. And then we can have some extra parameters. So let's say int uh, number one, int number two. So let's say we want to add two integers. Now this function, this command will only actually work if what they pass in afterwards are two integers. So we'll call this command add, like so. And then all we want to do is await, I mean, let's just copy this line, right? Why not? We want to do the exact same thing, send a message back, 
but we're going to use these parameters. So we want to send back um, number one plus number two. But this uh, these aren't strings currently. These are numbers. We need to convert it to text. So if you wrap these in a bracket and put dot two string. And we can probably even put this onto a new line just to make it a bit uh, easier to read. Okay, so as you see, we are... Actually, wait, that makes more sense to be there. We're sending a message asynchronously, which is the two numbers added together converted to a string, and then the config await. Okay, if we run this now, we don't have to do anything else. We can now just go ahead and use the add command, uh, and then we can add some numbers together and get it to respond if you want to. So it's online, we go back. And we can do add. Now, that won't do anything unless we pass in the parameters. Five, uh, four. We get back ten because it failed to add, apparently. That's kind of funny, actually. Um, I think... Oh, <laughs> it didn't fail to add. I failed to uh, I failed to type. Someone probably noticed that. But yeah, I mean, it did its job right, didn't it? It added number one and number one again <laughs> rather than number one and two, which is what I said. So add uh, five and six. We get eleven. Add some number and some other number. It adds them together, right? So now the bot does the command. And if I do uh, help add, I can then get a DM. The DM says, okay, so to add, you have number one, number two, and then each of them have to be integers. So it tells you what type they have to be. And you can actually add descriptions. So I guess the last thing to do for this video is to quickly mention the descriptions. Uh, and then, you know, that'll be it for this video. And then we can move on to something more complex next time. So essentially you can set a description on a command. So let's do that. Uh, ping, description, and then we can just say, um, returns pong, right? Whatever. And then description adds to uh, numbers together. Okay. Uh, and that's how you tag the command. And then we actually want to also tag, for example, the variables. So this int number one, we might want to tag saying, all right, well, the description for this specific uh, number is going to be something. Uh, whoa, what uh, was that? That's a bit weird. Um, let me just close that bracket. So in here, we might want to say, well, um, the description is just going to be first number. Okay, I'm going to separate this into some extra lines so we can actually read it. And we're going to say uh, description second number. It's just an example, right? It's Purely for an example, this is just whatever. Now, this might look weird. Now that I've moved it onto multiple lines, it's just because, yeah, I can have it on one line. Uh, it's just hard for you guys to read. I'll just leave it like this. I think this is fine. So, command context, and afterwards, they have to do number one, number two. Now, the benefit to having these descriptions is you can explain to your users how your commands work by them doing the command. So, if I now do, um, back in the server, help, we get the command, and it says the commands, and then we can do help, ping and it says ping returns pong okay and then we can do help add and it says number one first number number two second number it's pretty self-explanatory oh yeah add adds two numbers together so you can now create commands for your server you can you know add some numbers just do a response that's com that's really simple uh, as i said this video is meant to be a simple one um, if you want to go ahead and actually do some more stuff, just have a mess around with what you can do with context because context has everything you'll ever need for a command. You know, in context, you can get the member that sent the message. So you can say member.send message, you can send them a message themselves. You can add a role to a member. You can, uh, you know, you can do whatever. It's, it's up to you. There's so many things. Just press the dot after the member and you can read all the functions on them and have a look around there. Uh, it's kind of interesting actually what you can do. You could change their nickname if you wanted to. Uh, maybe you want to make a rename command, even though you can do it anyway in Discord. You get the point, right? You can make a channel to create a, uh, a command to create a channel. It's up to you. Just go wild, right? Have fun. Uh, I'd recommend doing it in a test server of some kind so that you uh, don't mess up an actual server and, or anything like that. Um, just make sure you've set permissions correctly in the server. Um, there's actually a tag that uh, you can add, I'll just tell you about it right now, but I'll cover it more in another video. If you want a command to be limited to like a certain role, you can do uh, requires role, requires role, require role, sorry. And then you can say, I, uh, you need any of these roles and then you can start passing in strings of the names. So maybe you need moderator or owner or whatever your role names are, right? Uh, what's wrong with this? No, that's fine. So that means that this command only works if the person doing it has the moderator or the owner role, okay? 
uh, sorry, if we this means we have to have moderator and owner, or you can do any, which is moderator or owner. And yeah, you get the point. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to ask down below any questions. Go to our server, ask questions, um, leave suggestions down below for what you want me to cover. But I hope you enjoyed this video. This code is going to go live on GitHub by the time you watch the video. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.